The best worst part of owning a brand new vehicle is what's right in here and unfortunately has to be done today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome to the middle of June. I cannot believe that we are effectively in the middle of 2024. Boys and girls, I got a great upload for you guys today. We're gonna be talking about the first mod that I'm doing to my 2024 Denali Ultimate 2500 HD. But first we have a line item of business that we have to take care of because man, this is the worst part of owning a new vehicle. It's time we sell it. What do you say? This thing's just got to go. It's aged. It's weathered. It can no longer exist. <laughs> Boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It's so great to be with you guys today. We are cruising in the 2024 Ultimate to actually drop off Sam from LRA's trailer as he was ever so gracious and ever so kind as he's always been and always will be. Now, this is actually the first time that I got to tow with the 2024 and the first time I got to tow with the 2024 in general. I did not have the pleasure of a trailer with the first truck that I got, which you guys can probably remember which was back in the early parts of 2023 and I can say it was a good experience I'm not gonna say that I can call out specific things that it's substantially better at but I will say the turbo in this truck is substantially different than that of the 2020 to 2023 model year obviously I'd spent a ton of seat time in all the Denali's that I had had over the years both ones that were restricted and unrestricted that I had obviously acquired unrestricted which makes a big difference go 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 this turbo spools substantially faster, which is extremely nice, and it seems like the exhaust brake actually tends to work a little bit better in this truck, especially as tow haul mode is engaged. Now, fuel economy was pretty freaking brutal. Not that I bought an HD truck to get any fuel economy, but uh, as you can see right now, I'm averaging 2.8 miles to the gallon. That drive summary resets every single time I drive the truck, so this thing will probably climb up to just south of 10 miles to the gallon. It's usually like 9.8 towing. Unladen, I'm seeing on the highway somewhere around like 13 miles to the gallon, and around city, like overall, I'm probably averaging like 11. So it's certainly not anything like the 1500 Denali Duramax was, but I didn't have that expectation going into it anyway. Now the first mod that I'm actually going to be doing to the truck and we're gonna be talking about later in this video is something related to towing that makes a substantial difference but we can't talk about that right now because I'm about to drop this trailer off and I'm running late for my next appointment which has to do with buying a brand new vehicle like I absolutely hate this part. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to the next destination next real quick but I just gotta say so much love, so much appreciation for all of you guys. Hear me out real quick. I just dropped a pretty heartfelt post on Instagram. If you haven't seen it, it's not that one. It's my most recent one on the front end of the Denali, and I actually just wanted to share this with you guys. Enjoying the freaking process, man. My mini rant, allow it to commence right now. I can't say I'm a fan of this whole phenomenon that social media is created through spearheading unrealistic expectations. In life as a whole, and this applies to pretty much every facet of life, and how the algorithm feeds that idealistic perspective, the perfect perspective, but the reality is that's not life. And within the auto enthusiast community as a whole, new vehicle, all the mods in a week, sell it or give it away and repeat it. Like, what a vicious cycle, right? What happened to building up the excitement and anticipation of the journey and the experience of the modification process? being motivated to work harder and grow more personally to achieve that next mod, appreciating every step of the way. Why have we all gotten so accustomed to the vehicle being in its final form in an unrealistic time? Well, everyone's doing it. It's all we see. It's the unforeseen shift. I fell victim to this, guys, and I'm admitting this right now because, well, I'm gonna get to that right now. I'm guilty of that. I needed to build more vehicles in less time to keep the, 
to keep the content engine alive. More trucks, more mods. Needed to one-up myself every single time. Needed to go bigger, better, crazier things because that's what everyone I thought was expecting. I needed to do more of what I thought everyone wanted to see versus more of why I started in the first place. I'm personally, guys, pumping the brakes. I'm going back to my route. I'm embracing the cycle and not rushing to the destination. I'm doing my best to be unlike the rest. When I started social media back in 2014, I had one simple goal and that was to connect with like-minded individuals who are on the same path or a similar similar journey as I was. Simply put, I wanted to connect with more like-minded people. Symbolically, this truck right here, this Denali right here, represents the journey of enjoying the phases that all things passion and life represent. That's where you guys can expect to see me and that's, when, that's what you guys can expect of me. It's not about buying an entire build before I even get the truck, but of course I accumulated a few parts, but enjoying the process of doing that and not having to do it at a commercial level. It's about enjoying the truck in every single phase of the process. It's about having this truck with paint match fender arches and ultimate lights on it that I'm absolutely pumped about because now I get to look forward to doing the other mods in a succession to those mods versus feeling like I need to get them done as fast as I possibly can. That's where you guys can expect to see me because I'm genuinely done with the expectation that social media has set as a precedence of perfection. That is not life. I'm all about embracing the process and I'm all about building the life that I wanna live through my motivation of vehicles with all of you guys. Those are the bells of sorrow because the worst part of buying a brand new vehicle is the part where you need to pay the damn taxes. Oh my God, it's the worst. Now listen, Lar Buick GMC is the absolute best to work with. One of the only downsides though is that you actually have to handle an additional expense out of pocket which is paying the taxes and registration. Now fortunately, they gave me an unbeatable offer on my 2022 and a half 1500 which then gave me a nice credit towards the overall purchase value of this truck. So rather than paying taxes on the full 90 something thousand dollars, we're gonna be paying taxes on only a small portion of that, which is the difference between the trade-in allowance and that of the actual purchase price. It's time to rip the Band-Aid off, boys. See y'all. Hope you have a great summer. Whoa, that was close. That was close. We are officially registered and I'm a few thousand dollars out of the hole, but if I didn't have the trade in, I'd be way more a thousand dollars out of the hole. So that's one of the benefits of trading in vehicles is although you don't get quite the amount that you could get from a resale perspective, you save on taxes. So they tend to kind of even out if you look at it from a holistic picture perspective. So food for thought genuinely don't understand is the gas price and diesel price variation that I'm seeing in these micro markets. Like for instance, gas station granted is placed on a busier road. So they're probably trying to capitalize a little bit further. Diesel's 449. But when you go right up the road, you can get diesel for 389, a 60 cent per gallon difference. Obviously the state of the United States is in a complete disarray. I think it goes without saying, and we don't need to go any further than that right now. But what is diesel at where you guys are in the US? Are you sub three? Are you north of four? Are you way north of five? I know some of you guys out there on the West Coast are seeing some crazy prices. So remember back in the day when I was talking about doing a big truck build? Well, I still have that desire, still have that ambition. I just ultimately kind of put that on the back burner on no simmer. I've since kind of pivoted in my life a little bit to focus my investments on buying things that will ultimately benefit me more in the future, such as real estate. I'm just over the empty feeling of buying things that leave me feeling like I'm not getting forward in life. Vehicles have been a big business of mine. I'm also now in the business of in Investing. Assets that give me passive rental income every single month that's guaranteed by the government is something that's so beautiful. I really like Section 8 right now for my investment strategy for a multitude of reasons. Now, I'm actually gonna break all of that out in my One Pivot program. Yes, guys, I have a program, but no, 
not everybody can apply and be accepted. I'm building something for the doers, for the thinkers, for the action takers that just need some systemic guidance as to how to proceed forward. This is something that I will be posting to all of the time, showcasing all of the businesses that I have and how they work. If this sounds like you and you're looking for that thing to get you on the path that you desire, I'd encourage that you check it out read through everything, understand it's not for everybody, and understand that I review every single application myself personally, because I want this program to not only be something that gets people on the path that they want to be on to achieve their righteousness in life, but also so they can begin connecting with other like-minded individuals from locally or across the country that are on that same path. And that brings me back to the point of the Peterbilt. Man, I would love to build one, but right now I'm just not focusing on that, because what I'm focused on is going to work for me in perpetuity indefinitely. So the systems and processes that I have actually just got us a really great lead over in Norristown. So I got to do a quick little comp on this. You guys hang tight while I knock out this process and then we're going to talk about the mod. Make it happen dog, you got this. So that's kind of the process. Buying real estate direct to seller is absolutely awesome. It takes out the entire middleman of the process and you're actually able to save on real estate commissions and other fees to the seller. Now these are typically distressed properties that we buy at substantial discounts because we either take title of the property or we actually work with other partner investors that take title of the property and do the work themselves. I'm actually detailing all of how I do exactly that through the One Pivot program, which is only one of the many perks of, of joining this absolutely elite group Group of people. All right, now the first mod for my 2024 Denali Ultimate. Well, technically I've already done some mods, so a little bit of clickbait there, but not a lot of tint from Accelerate Auto. We got the Dirty Max Jack special. Thank you so much, Brody. I love you. The backflip from Brody, which I talked to you guys about, which is fantastic and actually improves fuel economy. But now we are up in the mezzanine layer looking at all of the glorious parts that I have, but we are actually talking about these right here the first mod that i'm going to be installing on my truck are these airbags right here these are firestone airbags that i actually took off of my old denali before it left my possession because i need these things no matter what i have the pump i have the filter i have all the airlines i have the wiring i have all the brackets to actually install this kit on this truck and this right here is the greatest mod ever when towing i'm actually not going to be installing them today so i'm sorry Sorry for anybody that wanted to see some DIY. They will be going on probably this evening because I've been wrenching a lot once my kids are in bed and I have a little bit of me time just to chillax. So they're gonna be going on because towing without them absolutely sucks. Towing on these trucks, it's like you're riding on steel because you literally are. Three, four, five packs bouncy. Even towing that enclosed empty, the thing was just bouncing all over the place. It literally feels like you are riding on air and it makes the ride quality so plush and so smooth. So I'll update you guys in the next video. I'm hoping I can get them installed later. And it is all operated by remote. Ugh, that was not smooth at all. Ugh control so you can literally pump them up on the go. Now today's been fun. We have covered so many things and I hope that this was a great use of your time as you enjoyed my time with me. I'm anxiously awaiting for the next parts to arrive for this truck right here which is going to really bring it into kind of the next caliber. I'm so pumped about it. It feels amazing just being able to rejoice and appreciate all of those little mods that you do to your vehicle over time. I missed being able to look forward to that next mod, anticipate that next mod, and then and re-fall in love with the truck again after that mod. I love you guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you haven't already, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next episode.